quick update this week, which honestly, usually not my style, and this kind of got away from me. If you've ever seen the episode of Malcolm in the Middle, where Hal comes home and he flips the switch for the light bulb and it doesn't come on, and then he proceeds to keep finding one thing after another after another, to the point where he's eventually trying to take the engine out of the car, that's been the last few weeks on this project. So let's get to it. Since the last video, I started to look at, uh, well, I need to get the battery pack. Just, just let's button up the battery pack. That's a little bit of CAD, a little bit of circuit boards. You can send them off, no big deal. So I took the pack, I designed an enclosure around it and thinking oh, I'll keep those connectors. I can find some places to, to connect them onto the board. This will be great. It'll make it very repairable. And then I looked at it next to the derailleur and it was way too big. So the only way I was going to make any of this work is it's got to be smaller in every way. So do what I've always done is like, what's the minimum? Let's just basically skin around it. This is how I've worked at, at almost every company is when I have had to deal with plastics is just wrap the minimum amount of plastic around things. It doesn't make it look great, but maybe we can work on that later. And what I came up with looked better. It's still longer than I wanted. I, I mean, basically I, I'd love to go for something in the vicinity of um, a, uh, a battery for a mirrorless camera or the SRAM access system, something like that, something small. So looking at the placement on the bike, I, I thought to myself, all right, this is starting to look good. It's still a little big, but then I started moving things around. I mean, moving the derailleur and I realized that derailleur can swing back and forth a lot more than I had originally anticipated, which I could have just checked at the time, but I didn't. So now I have to, it also can move in and out. So you have to clear the motor, you have to clear the wires, even if you rotate it. And now it can also tilt back. And so you, you have to clear that and you have to have an arm coming. It, it's getting really long. And well, if you put a mass on anything cantilevered, uh, you, it's not a good situation. A lot of stresses. So I started looking at different positions. What if I put it under it? What if it moved with the derailleur? That was a bad idea. That's just pointless mass and decreasing performance. What about the knuckle on the back? I mean, it gets you as close to the motor and you can always know if the motor is or isn't going to hit it because if you design it right, it's always traveling with it. Okay. Well, that looks like an option, but then I'd have to make a whole knuckle. And I mean, like this, replacing this seems like a, a big, big chore. I wonder how it goes together. And it was around that time I remembered that I had a broken uh, derailleur when it uh, sucked itself up into the wheel on my old bike. So I went and I got that. So this led me to disassemble my old broken derailleur. And well, things were rough. It, it did not come apart how I thought it did. Now it's been years since I've disassembled one of these things. So there was a bit of a struggle here and taking pit, bits out in completely the wrong order. But eventually I did get it disassembled and I noticed that there was a whole bunch of inserts into that knuckle. And so after a little bit of testing with the soldering iron at various different temperatures, I confirmed something. What I remember this being called is a techno polymer, uh, basically a fancy buzzword for a mix of a thermoplastic and glass fiber and like just chopped strand glass fiber. And normally you do this with nylon. So you get all the great stuff about nylon, the durability, the toughness, and you increase, basically are increasing its modulus. You're making it stiff. The glass fiber will make it stiff and, and it gets the rest of the properties from the nylon. So tested a few different temperatures, confirmed, yeah. And then so put in a terrible tip in my soldering iron and I got out the handful of inserts that were in it. 
this led me into the idea that, okay, maybe I should try and model this together in CAD. Uh, I'm missing a huge chunk of this derailleur. <laughs> I can't find it. I think it was lost on the road. I don't know why I have the little threaded bit. Um, I must have disassembled it and, and through the moves, it got lost. So I don't have that bit and I don't remember what's in it. And I know that this aluminum, these two aluminum screw bits, they, they don't live in it by themselves. There's definitely a spring um, and it has to interface to something. And I'm not sure what. All right, let's go get a good-ish derailleur and let's try and disassemble that. It was around this time that I recalled having found out that on one side there's a five lobe Torx and the other side there's a six lobe Torx. And so people don't disassemble it, I guess. That's annoying, but I was prepared. Months earlier, I had bought a set of security bits for the express purpose of this. So I got them out. It doesn't have five lobe Torx in it. It has what I thought were five lobe Torx, were regular six lobe Torx with a hole in the middle. That's not any good. Well, I just ordered some carbon fiber nylon off Amazon. Might as well order another set of security bits. A few days later, those show up and I'm ready to disassemble it and didn't want to come apart. And uh, I started getting frustrated and I said, all right, let's, let's just use the impact driver on one side. And after scaring myself with the, the socket on one side in the wrong direction, um, it did come apart, but it, it felt way too tight. So tight that the security driver is, was now embedded firmly into the soft aluminum. Great. I dealt with it later, but kind of cost me the quality of those uh, threads on that uh, screwy in bit. So, yeah, that wasn't great. But it did inform me that there are two, um, what I'm pretty sure are aluminum. They could be stainless, but probably aluminum uh, rings. And, well, they don't want to probably come out easily. They're either bonded or, or heat staked in there into the glass fiber filled nylon. So... So now I've realized that there are a bunch of pieces I have missing and either I need to redesign them and get them machined or steal them from another derailleur, a good derailleur, which could then be the donor derailleur. <sighs> this is a, a lot. What if I just machine the whole thing out of aluminum? Like, sure, I'd have to spend all that time redesigning this whole thing, but now it's going to be strong. And I started looking at, all right, this is the path. This is the ideal path. Yeah, it's going to cost, you know, maybe $100 to get that machined in East Asia. But then I have this, like, assembly. I just pop the pins and I just put it all back together. And now I have my mount and my, my little uh, circuit board housing and all the... Uh, if you do that... Now you still have to have a chunk of plastic because you need the RF to get out. All right, well, let's go back to the whole carbon fiber nylon. Well, you better go test it when it shows up, which I'm not completely done, but it's in process. And, you know, just doing some, some in-hand tests, uh, it looks pretty good looking at the spec sheets. I mean, certainly it's an order of magnitude down in stiffness from aluminum, but yield failure point shouldn't be that different. Like it'll be a, like a very weak, terrible, like a cast aluminum. But I've had really amazing success with 3D printed nylon because it's Lear adhesion is just, it's really good. Probably because like, it is at the limits of temperature and 
and uh, it's basically goopy, completely goopy when you, it, it's going through. It doesn't lead to the greatest surface finish, especially if you get some moisture in it. But generally, um, I've had such good success. So maybe the carbon fiber will be similar? Now I have a bag full of derailleur parts, a slightly damaged other derailleur. I haven't accomplished nearly anything with the battery. And I'm thinking of just making a chain stay mount for this whole thing that's 3D printed out of whatever plastic, just so that I can start looking at development on the actual bike. Yep, not great. Well, Maybe I'll add some aesthetics to that battery pack. Yeah. Yeah, that's looking good. Let's add that to the list. Now we can check it off. Now, that's not to say that I haven't made progress in other years. I've been working on a bunch of different things. And uh, I've made some progress on how I think zero setting is going to work. Uh, it's not implementing code yet, but I've come up and tested methods that I, I think I like. That'll be another video. And I have built the snoop on derailleur and see how it's controlled for those overshifts I've shown before. And that's not bad either. So progress is happening, but this week was not great. Normally I'd say something like, I hope you learned something and thanks for watching. Well, I don't think anyone learned anything this week. At least nothing positive. And so as a consolation prize, I'm giving everyone who's still watching 50 internet points. You can spend those internet points however you want. Tell your friends. Um, you know, they should be impressed. I know I am. All I really learned is that sometimes a project takes two steps forward, three steps back, one to the left, four to the right, and then you just get distracted by whatever's on the other side of the street. So with that, thanks for watching.